Hello everyone, welcome to Boxing Science. My name is Danny Wilson, I'm the co-founder and also a strength and conditioning coach to many professional and amateur boxers. And it takes great pleasure in presenting to you uh, the science behind Ruiz and Joshua 2, the much anticipated rematch that's taking place in Saudi Arabia this weekend. If you're new to this channel, please give us a subscribe or like to the video, uh, show your support uh, and check out all the other videos that we've got lined up on different workouts and different educational uh, videos on the science behind boxing. Now, when it comes to a big fight, especially like an Anthony Joshua fight, we get questions from different podcasts and newspapers asking what is the science behind this fight, uh, especially when it's like uh, such a close, close fight to call. People want to get an advantage of trying to find out as much information as they can. And in the build-up to this fight, there's a lot of questions being asked around uh, being in Saudi Arabia. You know, is there going to be an impact with the heat, the environment? Um, it looks like Anthony Joshua's lost quite a bit of weight. So what's going to be the impact of that going into this fight? What are the tactics? And looking at what Ruiz's camp is looking like, obviously it being longer, what can we expect more from Andy Ruiz this time around? So before we go into it, like I said, subscribe to the channel. We've got plenty more videos and different exercise techniques for you to learn and how to implement strength and conditioning into your training environment. First of all, we go to Clash of the Dunes. This is taking place in Diria in Saudi Arabia. And when it was announced, a lot of concern for boxing fans, especially British boxing fans, is that it might be a disadvantage to Anthony Joshua boxing in such a hot country, uh, especially when Andy Ruiz comes from Mexico, which is a lot hotter than Britain. However, um, the heat will not be a problem because the temperature will be around about 17 degrees Celsius on uh, December 7th. And despite like heavyweights and heavier athletes, finding hotter conditions harder, it should be still cool enough. And especially with it being open air, there'll be airflow into the, uh, into the stadium. Uh, it should stay quite cool. If you compare it to uh, previous fights, Joshua has been used to being fighting in open air stadium. Uh, he's been fighting in March, April, uh, September time at Wembley and Cardiff and the minimum temperature for that was quite cool. However, in MSG, the last fight in, in New York City, uh, the temperature was actually higher than it would have been for uh, the fight in Saudi Arabia. So if anything, the heat should not be a problem. And if we look at the table to the bottom left, uh, in degrees Celsius at 50% humidity, it, it actually fits into the low risk category. So the heat should not be a problem in Saudi Arabia. A lot of questions have been asked about uh, AJ's weight loss, how this will benefit them uh, going into the fight, but also what are the limitations around it as well. First of all, what are the benefits? So obviously lighter boxers are often lighter on the feet and faster to the punch. So this is something that probably was needed the Ruiz fight, you know, he was struggling to uh, kind of move his feet away from Ruiz and keep the distance. Uh, and also, uh, Ruiz was naturally the faster fighter. So it could be a, a benefit for AJ to be a little bit lighter this time and a little bit faster to the punch. Also, it can make him feel looser and more relaxed, which will increase hand speed. Again, we'll be competitive with Ruiz this time. And then less muscle mass can help reduce high lactate levels. Uh, so when a, a boxer is more muscle bound and producing high forces, this can produce high lactates. So when you start putting your punches together and working high intensity bursts, this can like kind of increase uh, lactic acid uh, values and then can make you feel more fatigued. So this will help him uh, reduce fatigue following high intensity bursts. Uh, at being at this lower weight. So what are the limitations to losing this body mass? Well, naturally you're gonna lose some strength. Obviously when we're working with uh, boxers at lighter weight categories, we look to try and improve pound for pound strength as they come down to the weight. However, 
when you're heavier, you can have more weight behind you. And so if AJ is coming in lighter, he will lose some sort of like kind of strength uh, there. He's always been a big and strong, powerful athlete. And this has helped him like overcome like more technical fighters. So AJ is a world-class boxer, but he's come up against people that should have been technically better than him, such as like Povetkin and Klitschko. And his, his strength, his speed, his explosiveness has overcome them uh, technical challenges. So this has been a super strength for him. It's got him through a lot of fights. Uh, losing this body mass may reduce the effect effectiveness of one of his super strengths. And the, the question is as well, will it improve fitness? So it said that it can reduce fatigue uh, following like kind of high intensity bursts, working at them high lactate levels. They, you know, they, it won't be kind of filling up with lactic acid as much. Also, it'll help you uh, reduce that perceptual fatigue. You know, if, if you feel heavy, it can make you feel uh, more fatigued and can can kind of limit your performance, uh, especially going over a 12 round distance. However, if you actually look at it uh, scientifically of improving aerobic capacity, AJ would have to lose a lot of weight to try and improve his fitness. So let's say if he maintains his, his peak performance of aerobic capacity, he would have to lose 10 kilos to make a meaningful change. So that's like a 10% increase in fitness and 10% increase in VO2 max. So if his aerobic capacity stays the same, but he reduces weight, this will improve his VO2 max. So to, for him to achieve a meaningful change, he would have to drop 10 kilos. This is 22 pounds. So from his last fight, where she weighed in at 248, he would have to go all the way down to 226. AJ made his debut around about the 230 mark. So he's not going to be uh, reducing his body mass to that level. So if, let's say, realistically, he might have dropped his weight to 240. We don't know until he hits the scales on uh, Friday afternoon. But this will like kind of make his VO2 max only just 1% greater. You know, th this 1% in fitness, will that kind of outweigh the, the uh, reduction in kind of strength and explosiveness that it will have from losing that muscle mass? We can only find out on Saturday night. But for sure, I think that AJ's weight loss will help him be faster and lighter on his feet and faster to the punch, something that will help him technically. But physically, the benefits of, of fitness might not be able to outweigh uh, the reduction of his strength and explosiveness. So now we're going to go into tactics. I'm not going to go into technical with it because we're not boxing coaches, we're sports scientists. And as sports scientists, we like to look at the, the performance analysis and looking at the numbers. Um, so this, this is what we're going off from what the experts are saying across uh, social media, YouTube, on Sky Sports as well. And most of the experts are saying how AJ needs to go like almost like Klitschko-esque and start using the jab, keeping the distance, not getting involved in the tear-up. And this will kind of actually complement his weight loss, as in trying to stay light on his feet, um, not taking centre of the ring uh, and keeping his distance from Ruiz and making it a little bit of a dull fight. So let's have a look at the stats from, from fight one. AJ normally averages around about 22 jabs per round and he has a pretty high connection rate as well with 31% of the jabs he throws actually lands on his opponent. During the uh, Ruiz Jr. fight, he only averaged 15 jabs per round and following round three where he got knocked down twice, he only averaged 11 jabs per round. Also, there was a 23% uh, jab connection, which is still pretty high but a lot lower than what he uh, landed on his previous opponents. He had some rounds where he was really successful, where he landed almost 43% of his uh, jabs in round six, and then uh, some rounds where he only landed 8% uh, of his uh, jabs. So what does this suggest? Well, like I said, his um, 
jabs thrown and uh, connection rate was a lot less than normal. However, it's still higher than most heavyweights. So we're still having uh, success with his jab. The main figure shows that like, AJ threw a lot less jabs than normal and probably needs to start utilizing that more to keep Ruiz off. Ruiz jab count and connection was really low and it normally is when we look at his stats in previous fights uh, against Parker. He only throws a, a very small amount of jabs per round and he has a, a low percentage uh, connection rate as well. So Ruiz, in order to get in and try and let his hands go on the inside uh, where he gets the most success, he's going to move his feet in without like jabbing. So he's going to leave him open on the way in. So it would be a great tactic for AJ to throw more jabs in the rematch and it could be a key tool for him on his way to, to winning the rematch and regaining his heavyweight world titles. So there's been a lot of talk about uh, Ruiz having a, a very, very short camp last time. I think it was around about four or five weeks uh, notice. And yeah, it was going from back-to-back -back camps. But following a fight, obviously a boxer will get up to no good, eat what they want, maybe drink alcohol, uh, have a week off. And sometimes I think like, how did, how did that, this athlete achieve peak performance just a week ago? Uh, and they come in quite unfit like only like within a week or even two weeks so even though it's back-to-back -back camps you know that week off can be quite detrimental so he only had about four or five weeks in order to prepare for Joshua so this time he's got a lot longer to prepare and we know that at Boxing Science that a longer training camp can help promote high increases in performance but how much difference will this have on Ruiz's performance so let's have a take a look at some stats. Ruiz's stats when he faced Parker in his uh, WBO world title fight um, in 2017, where he narrowly missed out on a, a split decision or a majority decision. Uh, a lot of people say that he should have won this fight as well. So against Parker, Ruiz threw 61 punches per round, which is absolutely massive. Uh, the heavyweight average is 44 punches per round. But against Anthony Joshua, he only threw 29 per round. So over 50% less than what he threw against uh, Parker. Against Parker, he also had great success with the power punches. He landed almost 60% of his power punches, which is absolutely massive for a boxer at any weight, never mind heavyweight. And against Joshua, he only landed 33%. Ruiz weighed in against Parker at £255, whereas against AJ, it was £268. So it was £13 lighter for the Parker fight in comparison to the Joshua fight. Let's have a look at like how he threw his punches. 56% of his punches were thrown in combinations, whereas Joshua was throwing a lot of single punches and only 19% of his punches were in combinations. So what does this suggest for the fight coming up in Saudi Arabia? Well, these figures show that Ruiz has got a lot more in the tank. He threw twice as many punches per round against Parker than he did against Joshua in June this year. But he only had five weeks notice. He was a stone heavier and he was against a much bigger puncher, which will have made Ruiz a lot more cautious of his work rate throwing punches, leaving himself open to uh, Joshua's punches. Also, Ruiz lets his hands go in combinations, whereas AJ looks for a lot of single shots. For more detail insight, the combinations that Ruiz threw were actually more bent arm shots than straight arm, whereas like, AJ threw a lot of straight, uh, straight shot combinations. So my analysis from this is that if Ruiz comes in lighter, so under 260 pounds, and say that he's had a longer camp, you should expect Ruiz to set a much higher work rate in the rematch than he did uh, in the fight in New York City on June the 1st. He's going to try and keep AJ under a lot of pressure, and when he's on the inside, he's going to let his hands go 
with a lot of bent arm uh, combinations as you saw in the first fight. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope this has given you a good insight to the science behind this mega clash in Saudi Arabia on Saturday night. If you like the video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel where we've got plenty more videos on the science behind boxing. I'd like to wish both boxers and the teams all the best for the weekend. We only get a small insight into the training behind what goes in to each uh, fight and each training camp. So we can't make the assumptions of what's been going off, but we can only deal with the snippets of information and try and uh, make some sort of analysis from this. Um, I hope you found this information uh, useful and I will catch you on the next video. Cheers, guys.